It's time to kick off season three of our FIFA 22 Hamburg career mode. And if things can go anything like they did last year with a mid table finish in the Bundesliga and a victory in the DFB Pokal, we should have a big season ahead. Winning the League Cup has secured us Europa League. We've been placed in a group with Athletic Club Bilbao, Panathinaikos, and Lech Poznan. But as we should focus to this squad overview, you're going to notice some changes compared to last season, most notably at the center back position. Vuskovic's two year loan has come to an end and he's returned back to Hajduk Split. In the last episode if you'd like to see the Vuskovic deal made permanent and the majority of you that left comments said that yes you would like to see Vuskovic return here at Hamburg for the long-term future in a lot of aspects this transfer makes sense Vuskovic's two-year loan was largely successful and we achieved a lot of great things at the club and this has started to impact some of our board objectives I anticipate they're going to start getting more and more difficult just mid-table expectations in the Bundesliga but I'm trying to really make strides in the Europa League, even if it's not a huge priority for the board. With that said, we're going to need to generate more funds if we want to make this Vuskovic deal permanent. 25 million is not going to be enough. And I wasn't set on letting any individual player go. I was just waiting to see what sort of offers we'd receive. I found this one for race to be really interesting from Ajax. And not a bad offer at 9.1 million, but we're going to look to get that deal even higher, ultimately settling at a 10 million fee. Race was a good player for us at Hamburg, but I don't think he was necessarily first team quality. He was more of a rotational center midfielder. And having previously played at Hronigan in the Eredivisie, I'm wishing him all the best in his future endeavors. Now, I know using the majority of your transfer budget on a single player can sometimes be a risky move, but we know Vuskovic can do well for us. He solidified our defense and still at just 21 years old, I anticipate him reaching the mid 80s, maybe even the upper 80s in his overall come the end of this career mode. He's basically got a plus three in his rating each and every season. Finally settling on a 34 million transfer. We also included a 10% sell on clause as part of this deal. Fair play to Hajduk Split for this transfer. They knew how valuable Vuskovic was to us and we had to pay up the transfer fee accordingly. Thanks for all the feedback left so far on this series. I'm really enjoying these saves more when they can be interactive. And if you are enjoying this Hamburg career mode, make sure to leave a like on the video and subscribe so you don't miss out on future uploads. Having depleted pretty much the entirety of our transfer budget, we'll need to turn to the free agents to make any additional signings. And I was surprised to see that Joshua Zerkse was available on a free transfer. If you played FIFA 20 at all, you're probably familiar with this player, but he spent the last few seasons out on loan from Bayern, has seemed to establish himself in the Belgian Pro League over at Anderlecht, where he scored eight goals from 16 appearances for the 21-22 season. But having signed a couple of Bayern wonder kids like Jan Fita so far in this save I thought we would continue that trend here we just had enough funds to complete this deal I don't think we even had enough to pay for lunch so hopefully Xerxes and his agent covered that he'll be inheriting the number 17 for us which used to be Krause's number but with him being one of the top performers here at Hamburg we're going to switch him up to the number seven still potential to be special and a player that I imagine will receive some transfer offers in the future in the meantime I want to showcase some of these other offers apparently Karius has generated interest from the Super League he did spend a season out on loan at Besiktas, and now Fenerbahce are interested. Also really like this loan spell for Tommy Doyle, who has started to go up in his overall. I'm not saying that he won't be a future first team player, but he's going to see a massive rise if he wants to compete. I believe we had about 10 players going out on loan in total. And this is mostly to see which one of our youth academy players will actually reach the upper ends of their potential. In the future, I'm going to be more open to transfer listing players that will never play a role in this Hamburg squad. We'll establish two new scouting networks, though, to build upon our extremely talented youth academy. Of course, keeping a scout in Germany for three months looking for any type of player. We'll also set up a network in Austria, which is one of the more common nationalities in the Bundesliga. I don't believe we have a player from this country in the current Hamburg squad. But again, it is one of the more popular nationalities for the club, at least in pre previous years. Another bonus of winning the DFA Pokal is that we'll be involved in the Super Cup for this season against league winners Bayern München. Having signed some of their players, this should make for an interesting matchup. But I want to showcase some of the changes to the squad. We have settled on having Aguirre as a center midfielder. No change in his rating yet, but I think this balanced development plan will be super beneficial for him as kind of a box-to-box -box CM that can do a little bit of everything. And Yata has suffered a couple of long-term injuries, but fortunately he was fully healthy for our first match of the year. Let's get into this gameplay and see how we get on for season three. I was surprised by the lack of signings in this Bayern team, but clearly whatever they've done so far has worked out for them as they've dominated the Bundesliga the last two seasons, and I'm expecting something similar 
here for season three. But we do manage to get the first highlight in this one. It's Vinceheimer battling through a challenge, getting the return pass from Kitzel and securing the first goal of season three. 25 minutes into the match, despite the improvements Byron have made in their defense, he's still able to get this shot by Manuel Neuer and open up the scoring for us. It seemed like after we scored the initial goal, Byron's defense had a complete lapse in concentration. Krause played in behind and he'll get the second goal of the match, make it run into the channels. And shortly after kickoff, we're going to get another opportunity. Vinceheimer working the ball from right to left, finding Aguirre with that pace in the 90s. He's able to get into the box and get the third goal within about 10 minutes, putting us in a really good position to lift some silverware in our first match of the season. I felt like we just got very lucky on these few chances. Neuer couldn't do much about these shots, and defensively, we looked strong. Lewandowski now playing a ball in behind to Coleman, getting this one on his left foot. But the effort is going to be dragged narrowly wide. Had it been on target, Karius might have had it covered, but I think that kind of sums up Byron's first half performance. As we get into these next 45 minutes, we just need to make sure we hold our concentration, not give Byron an opportunity to get back into the match. Zerski nearly scores on his debut, but his effort was denied. Sané showed a few sparks and promise for Bayern, but Vuskovic with a good interception. And just like that, we're able to get the victory. Not too many highlights in this one, but we got the goals early on, and it looks like we'll be able to continue our momentum from season two. The big question is, if we can have the same levels of success in Europa League. But here's a look at the statistics. Again, I felt like we got slightly lucky in this match. Our XG was lower than our actual scoreline. And by the way, I have adjusted sliders to make things more difficult for us. Because we have three Europa League group stage matches to showcase, I'm not going to place a big emphasis on the Bundesliga, but I still want to showcase this opening day result against Dortmund. Obviously a difficult opponent, but we still secure the one point. Nearly walked away with the win had it not been for an 83rd minute equalizer. As for the Europa League, Bill Bow will be our first opponent. Obviously, a very strong side with some high potential players, not necessarily sticking to their Basque region transfer policy in career mode, which is a bit of a shame. But on the simulator result, we managed a 2 1 victory. Hopefully, we can get something similar for the gameplay. I'm always excited to get involved in European competitions, making the trip over to Spain. And this, of course, is another real stadium in FIFA 22. It just offers something different for your saves. I'm sure a lot of you can relate to that. Bill Bauer will get the first chance in this one. It's Emre Chan, the former Bundesliga man, that gets an effort on target and on the ensuing corner kick. This is a mistake from Kitzel. Maybe I should just be clearing those sort of chances away. I thought we could bring the ball down and hopefully play out of the back. But Bill Bauer, quick to leap on the opportunity. And Karius basically tumbling into Leibold there. We will generate a chance, though, with Wagnerman playing through Yatza. He's trying to play the near post cross to Vinsheimer. And we did well to make contact, but unfortunately are unable to get the equalizer. Another good defensive stop from Vuskovic. I'm trying my best to showcase how good of a defender he is. They're not the flashiest highlights per se, but I can always appreciate a solid defender. And Vuskovic certainly has been that for us. In the 30th minute, we're finally able to get something going as Yata on the volleyed effort. We'll get this by Simon. I was concerned that he wouldn't be able to reach similar form because of the injuries, but that has not been a problem for him. We're going to continue that trend where once we score a goal, things seem to come alive for us. Kitzel being played through. This one is narrowly going to be called offside. It was a close call in the end. The left back nearly keeping him on, but Vinceheimer being brought off in the 55th minute. We want to make sure we're featuring both Vinceheimer and Zerksky a pretty even amount of time because they both have an important squad role for the team. But this is some good passing play from Bill Bow. It ended up being a late challenge from Vuskovic, and I think this was entirely my fault. I was just trying to get a tackle in, and maybe I wasn't paying the most attention to who was on the ball. You'll see on the replay, it was kind of a weird one. To, to bring back, but in the end, it was a good save from Karius, who I don't know what it's been about him outside of the first episode where he featured. He has been completely solid as a goalkeeper, despite a fairly low rating, but a long shot effort from none other than the French wonder kid in Ryan Cherky. Bill Bell has made some team with their transfers and clearly their signings are making the impact. We aren't quite done yet though. Arp is played through. He tries sending in a low driven cross and it's Zerzky that is going to get another one of these volleyed efforts. Two somewhat lucky goals for us to score, but I felt like we kept on battling in this match, not conceding the penalty kick, which Karius managed to save and really playing a strong 90 minutes against 
the team that I think is favorites to win our Europa League group. I'll absolutely take a single point in this contest, especially when we take a look at the head-to-head -head statistics three expected goals compared to our 0.9. A positive step forward in Europa League with a good result against Bilbao, but these next two matches will essentially determine our fate. For the simulated result against Panathinaikos, we picked up a 2-0 victory. It's tough to gauge the quality of this opposition. I don't know too much about Panathinaikos outside of the fact that they're regularly involved in European competitions. That counts for something. And judging by how they play in this match, I can see why. They're going to start on a positive note, getting a shot on target against Karius. And on the ensuing corner kick, the flicked on header ends up in the back of the net. This has to go to VAR ultimately. But you can see from this decision, the ball narrowly crossing the line. So Panathinaikos starting the match off with a 1-0 lead. We can see both me and Zerksky getting into some talks. And I will make that substitution as we get into the 60th minute. This is typically what I was doing throughout the matches giving Vinsheimer the majority of minutes, and depending on how results went, Zersky finishing out the match. This is exactly why we brought him on. He does some nice dribbling to set up Krause. We're unlucky not to get the equalizer there, but it's Yata who plays Vognemann, and the effort blocked once, blocked twice, blocked a third time as Panathinaikos try to hang on, but it's Zersky getting by the defense. He squares it across, and it is Kinsombi to finally get the tying goal. Kinsombi has scored so many clutch goals for us in this save, and that's why I want to keep him as a squad rotational player throughout this series. But here in the 90th minute, it was Panathinaikos with the corner. We're going to look to get on a counter attack. It was a perfectly timed pass from Krause to find Kitzel. He gets slide tackled inside the box. I don't think the defender really had much else he could have done. And he was quite lucky to only get away with a yellow card here. Kitzel was fouled on the chance. He'll also take the penalty kick, sliding it off to the right. Despite the yellow time finish, we will still find the side netting, giving us a 2-1 lead and three crucial points added to our Europa League group stage. I think a draw here against Lech like Poznan and we should be through to the next round of Europa League. With that said, I'd like to pick up a win because that'll increase the chances of us winning our group and thus having an easier matchup in the knockout stages. Simulation wise, it was a 2-0 victory. Yata and Wagnermann getting involved in the scoring. The Hamburg fans bringing out the Yata Tifo for this one. Happy to see him involved as kind of a club icon in this save. Of course, I think he's the longest serving player currently at the club. He was a part of their relegation campaign a few seasons ago, and now he is a part of their rise towards the top of the Bundesliga. But it's like Poznan who start things off on a positive note. Had it not been for that last second challenge from our defenders, I think that could have easily resulted in a goal. But our opponents proving tough to break down as we get into the 33rd minute. Good save from Karius and cleared away from our defense. Another cross sent in, this one going just wide of the post. We do finally break through in the 40th minute. It's Aguirre with the low driven shot. Haven't actually utilized this tactic so much recently, but in front of goal, it has proven to be one of the most consistent ways to score goals. It's going to be a foul from the Lech Poznan player. We got through up until the last match once again in this episode, but two yellow cards will mean Kaminsky being sent off with a red. I'm going to have to do some research and see if there's any sliders or something I can do about that because it is proving to be quite frustrating. Obviously, things get a lot easier once the opposition goes down to 10 men, and that was the case in this one. Good turn from Zersky and ultimately a really nice finish to make things too. He seems to be the impact sub, offering something a little bit different compared to Vinsheimer. And I think having the target man build plus the pace as well as some pretty decent passing attributes, means that he is the perfect striker to have, especially when you have two quick wingers around him. He's played through in the 75th minute. Could have had a hat trick on the day had he not been unselfish. But you all know, he's a team player, and what counts the most is that the squad is getting goals. A pretty dominant 4-0 performance on the day should put us top of the Europa League group, but let's check in for the mid-season recap and see what our future looks like with Hamburg. The Bundesliga wasn't a huge area of focus because this is the first year we are involved in European competitions, but we've done well so far. Our board objective is to finish mid-table. I think we've exceeded those expectations currently in eighth, and no surprise to see us top our Europa League group. 16 points from six matches played and some really good results, even against the likes of Athletic Club Bilbao, who I anticipated winning our group. But some decisions to be made for our starting 11. Now that we are getting to the knockout stages of Europa League, you have to wonder if some of our current players are good enough 
to make the cut moving forward. With how well Zerske has done coming off the bench, I've considered moving him to be our starting striker. But looking at Vinsheimer's numbers, I don't think he could possibly lose his place in the starting 11. So maybe we need to convert to more of a two striker formation. I know we've tried it out in the past with not the most success. Board objective wise, we're also in a really promising shape. Well into the green. Still not too many funds to work with in our transfer budget. So what I'm kind of thinking of doing moving forward is letting some of these younger high potential players go because they probably won't work their way into the team. And since they have such a good value, we can get some funds via that method. If you have any transfer suggestions in mind, let me know in the comments section below. But I do want to thank channel members for supporting what we do here on YouTube. If you ever want to learn more about the membership program, click the join button right underneath the video. That's going to be a wrap for today's Hamburg episode. If you enjoyed it, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you're new. But until next time, this has been Flick. I'll be talking to you all again soon.